My name is Ronnie Hogri. Uh, I did my PhD at Tel Aviv University at the lab of Professor Mati Mintz, where we focused on sensory signaling in the cerebellar system and how this could be applied to neuroprosthetics. Uh, nowadays, I'm a postdoc at the Center for Brain Research in Vienna in uh, Professor Jürgen Sandkuller's lab, uh, where we focus on the neurophysiology of pain. And uh, me and my group specifically focus on pain-emotion interactions. Okay, so in recent years, I've been focused on the lateral parabrachial nucleus. Uh, this is a, a brainstem nucleus that receives information about nociceptive events, uh, for example, from the spinal cord, and uh, projects then this information to different areas in the brain. Uh, if you activate or disinhibit this uh, nucleus in animals, then you uh, uh, see behaviors such as uh, indicative of uh, pain and aversion. So it has been suggested that this uh, nucleus is very important for the emotional, uh, motivational aspects of pain, which are clinically very relevant because uh, obviously uh, pain patients suffer from their pain. And uh, in fact, a lot of them uh, present with uh, uh, psychological comorbidities such as depression, uh, social withdrawal, uh, elevated anxiety, and so on. Uh, and one thing that I find really interesting about the uh, lateral parabrachial uh, nucleus is that it does not only receive sensory information, it also receives information from a lot of uh, other brain regions which uh, serve different functions. And this suggests to me that uh, pain information that uh, enters the brain through this uh, station can be, uh, uh, can be already modulated at this very early stage before it's distributed throughout the brain. Um, one of the pathways that we found most interesting was this pathway coming from the central amygdala to the lateral parabrachial. And the reason this is interesting is because the central amygdala is one of the main outputs of the limbic system. And the limbic system is uh, very important for emotional control. And we know that emotion and pain are uh, tightly linked. So we wanted to uh, look deeper into this uh, pathway. So to start, uh, we used a viral vector approach to uh, retrogradely label neurons uh, projecting to the lateral parabrachial. And uh, we found that in the amygdala, these neurons uh, reside in the medial uh, part of the central nucleus of the amygdala. Um, using a, a combination of fluorescence in situ hybridization and confocal microscopy, we genetically characterized uh, the central amygdala neurons. Um, and for the purpose of today's talk, I just want to focus on the fact that uh, they all seem to express the vesicular uh, GABA transporter, uh, meaning that they are probably GABAergic. So to confirm that these projections are indeed GABAergic, uh, we performed a, a, a um, optogenetic experiments. And in these experiments, we injected a viral vector encoding the gene for uh, chamarodopsin into the central amygdala. And after a while, we applied blue light uh, at the level of the lateral parabrachial in order to stimulate the axons of amygdala neurons projecting there. And here on the right, you can see results from uh, patch recordings in the, uh, in the acute brainstem slices, so from the parabrachial uh, nucleus. And as you can see, uh, uh, activation of these amygdala axons with uh, blue light stimulation induces uh, postsynaptic currents in these parabrachial neurons. And these postsynaptic currents can be blocked by application of the GABA-A antagonist Bicuculin, uh, confirming that this is indeed a GABAergic projection. So next we wanted to see uh, if this uh, pathway has uh, any significance for pain processing in vivo. And uh, we started by doing uh, electrophysiological experiments in anesthetized rats and used the tetrod approach to record uh, single units from uh, the lateral parabrachial. Uh, and we gave these rats uh, noxious stimuli either in the absence or in the presence of optogenetic stimulation of this amygdaloparabrachial pathway. And indeed, we found that for all types of the noxious stimuli that we uh, tried, uh, activation of this pathway induced a reduction in the response of lateral parabrachial neurons. In behaving animals, um, activation of this pathway uh, increased the response thresholds uh, to mechanical and heat stimulation, indicating that the animals were less uh, sensitive to these uh, stimuli. And uh, if uh, activation of this pathway makes 
pain, less painful, so to speak, then you would expect that a painful stimulus would then have a less of an ability to uh, induce aversive learning. So to test this, we used a fear conditioning paradigm in which a tone was paired with a noxious shock, uh, but the noxious shock was, giving, uh, was given on the background of uh, uh, laser stimulation of the lateral probrachial. And uh, the next day we tested uh, uh, conditioned fear responses in these animals. And indeed these fear responses were reduced in animals uh, exhibiting, uh, in animals expressing channel adoption, sorry, uh, uh, indicating that these animals indeed uh, uh, experienced the painful stimulus is less painful. So we know that the amygdala is, in, is important for emotional control, and we know actually that it can modulate pain. And uh, one uh, thing that is studied uh, quite a lot is uh, that the acute stress responses uh, cause a combination of strong analgesia, but also a negative emotional state. Um, and this is done ma mainly by activation of the amygdala, uh, amygdala uh, projections to the periacoductal gray and then an um, indirect uh, inhibition of spinal cord uh, neurons. So we wanted to know, uh, does activation of this amygdala parabrachial uh, pathway have any impact on emotional motivational behavior? So the first behavior we looked at is the behavior of thigmotaxis. This is what some times called a uh, wall hugging behavior. So rodents, uh, when you put them in an open field, they like to stay near the walls because they don't like to be exposed in the middle. Um, and we found that when we activated uh, this pathway in rats, then uh, they uh, exhibited less thigmotaxis behavior. Um, we then performed another fear conditioning experiment, but this time we did not apply the laser stimulation during the acquisition phase, but rather during the test phase. And the point here was to check uh, the effect of this laser stimulation on uh, freezing behavior. And indeed we found that uh, freezing behavior was uh, reduced in uh, animals expressing channel rhodopsin. And this uh, reduction was time locked to the application of the optogenetic stimulation. So together these results indicate that uh, activation of this pathway reduces defensive responses. Um, we also found that activation of this pathway induces uh, place preference in rats and also induces uh, feeding in rats. So uh, taken together, these results together with other published data uh, indicate that uh, uh, when you excite or inhibit uh, lateral probrachial neurons, then this affects the emotional motivational state of the animal. And our results uh, show that if you activate this pathway from the amygdala to the lateral probrachial, you can shift the motivational state uh, in the direction of the uh, appetitive pole. And, um, thinking you know, far into the future uh, about uh, how this might benefit patients, then patients uh, uh, in which you could somehow stimulate this pathway uh, would then feel less pain, but also uh, have a better, uh, more positive emotional state. And this would improve, of course, their uh, well-being, but also their prognosis. Um, and with that, I would like to thank the entire uh, Sandkuller Lab for a great uh, working atmosphere and fruitful discussions. I want to especially mention uh, Hannah Teuchmann and Valerian Musetto, two PhD students that I am working closely with. Uh, Hannah just uh, submitted a, a manuscript about a different project. Uh, Valeria still has about a year left to go. I'd like to also acknowledge uh, Bernard Heinke, our master of uh, in vitro affairs, and uh, of course, Jürgen Sandkuller for this great opportunity to work in such an excellent environment. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. Great. Um, yeah, do we have any questions? Where's the Q&A? Okay. In the meanwhile, I can ask a question then that gives me the privilege. I just wanted to know is whether this LPBN uh, region and neurons, specifically neurons that you see modulate this behavior, uh, are they specifically affecting these types of behavior or you think that they can inhibit or uh, activate other types of behaviors? Like, could it be related to um, um, controlling anxiety in other modes or maybe suppress activity in other contexts? 
Uh, yes, so a uh, very good question. I think in general, there is uh, quite a lot of evidence that uh, these uh, lateral parabrachial neurons can be activated by different kinds of aversive uh, stimuli. Uh, for example, uh, it seems that the same uh, neurons that are activated by a pinch uh, would be activated by uh, intraperitoneal uh, application of uh, LPS. Uh, this was shown by Richard Palmer's group a few years ago. Uh, so it does seem that they uh, respond to various types of aversive stimuli. So LPS usually um, inhibits the mouse activity. At least I call it inhibits because mice that were injected with LPS sometimes depends on the dosage really, really stop moving. So in that case, would they start moving, start behaving just like you showed on your open field there, like to some extent? This is a very interesting question and uh, maybe a, an experiment to consider. Thank you. Mm -hmm.